Okay, uh, my name is uh, Moises Garcia Guzman. I am from San Jerónimo Tlacochahuaya here in the Valley of Central Valley of Oaxaca. Uh, I'm going to talk about what's going on with my language. My native language is Zapotec. Uh, what uh, it's called Valley Zapotec. Um, I wouldn't say it's uh, disappearing. Maybe uh, the term I'm going to use is that it's not being used enough because it's there. People know it. Um, unfortunately, it's um, falling into the category of not being used enough because uh, only the adult population uh, speak it. Uh, maybe I'm going to say about 60 or 70 percent of uh, people in the town and younger generations are not using it because it's not being taught at home. Parents are losing interest um, in it, probably. I'm going to use that expression. They're losing interest um, in it. And um, to my view, it's um, we were talking about how it is uh, part of your cultural identity, part of who you are as a town, as a culture. So parting from there, that's when we decided to, to start a project to, to teach it, to make it available to the public. Uh, we faced the m most important challenge we faced was uh, the logistic challenge. Where do we have a classroom? Where do we have equipment? On how do we start this project? So. First, um, I grew up in Tlaco, Chihuahua. Um, Zapotec is my native language, and then I studied um, elementary, um, high school, and then I graduated from a business school here in Oaxaca. And then that's when I decided to go to the States because my father got some um, arrangements with uh, documents from the States under the amnesty. So my mother and I qualified for family re reunification. So that's why we left to the States in the year 2000. And I stayed in California for 14 years. I worked for Verizon, the phone company, doing translations from English to Spanish pamphlets in phone bills. So uh, being there, that's when the interest started, OK? Because um, to my view, being away of your town or being away of your, of your state, that's when you really um, turn back and realize how important your culture is. And that's when we decided with my friend in California, his name is Edgar Angeles, okay, what do we do to, to save our language? Because it's, it's not being used. And being here in the state, that's when we realize how important it is because it's part of our identity. If we go, for example, to the Tlacolula market, you hear some expressions, you hear some tones, you hear some variants and you automatically distinguish and say, okay, these people is from San Marcos La Pasola. Okay, they are from Galavia. They are from um, Teotitlan del Valle because of the accent, because of the way they speak. So that's why we said, okay, so we have that. We have a way to make ourselves, to distinguish ourselves from other people in the same valley. So um, we said, okay, the only resource we have is the language here in our heads there. That's the only resource we have. So now let's take advantage of, um, of media, social networks. We have YouTube, OK? It's a great tool that we have. Let's pull a camera. Let's buy a whiteboard and some markers. And let's rehearse some lessons, OK? Let's start. How do we start? OK, so we decided on when we read some articles about language uh, preservation and that's when we learned also we actually came to the conclusion that any effort that you have to or that you want to make to preserve the language it has to come from speakers themselves and it has to be worked as well in the communities because um, being there in the states yes we have some people from Tlaco Chihuahua okay we can have some lessons maybe but where we really really need um, the efforts are in the town itself in Tlaco Chihuahua Okay, so we decided to um, start interviewing um, elderly people, okay? How do you use these pronouns? How are these words used? Um, 
what are the name of these animals, what are the name of these plants, how are the colors, everything. We started to um, interviewing some people, actually some of the videos are in the YouTube channel. And that's when we started doing like a compilation. Okay, let's start first with the pronouns, then we go with um, sizes, and then we go with colors, and then um, little by little we started um, forming this uh, mini lessons, this um, I'm gonna dare to call them tutorials about uh, Zapotec of Tlacochahuaya. And then we decided to, to start recording and publish them on, online on YouTube. Uh, one of those videos or some of those videos um, that, that immediately made um, an impact because people were writing to us, uh, what a great idea that you had, or oh, we wanted something like this long time ago, very good that you started doing it. Now we have messages from people in Mexico City, in Yucatan, in New York, in Chicago, people from Tlaco Chihuahua, they were like, oh my God, finally you got something like this. What a great idea. And then one of those videos landed in, uh, <laughs> Brooke uh, took, um, uh, took a look at them and then she brought me an email. Uh, I almost fell out of my chair when I read the email. Oh my God, a linguist from UCLA is writing to me about this. And that's when we um, started to publish, uh, working and publishing. Remember now we have 32 lessons. We are still working on, on some more now that we, and that I am here in Tlacochahuaya because now I have access to um, some other people, my neighbors, my dad that he retired also and he lives here now. And now every time we go to the uh, to the fields, because Lago Chihuahua, it's an um, agricultural town. It's, it doesn't have handicrafts or anything. It's mainly they work the, the fields. So every time we go to the fields, okay, Dad, how do you name this plant? Uh, what do you use it for? Because some are like medicinal, some are to cure some type of stomach flu or something. So that's when we um, started to get into more detail on plants and animals and seasons, also some signs in the skies. What do you see when it's going to rain? What do you see when it's going to be windy or something? We are exploring all those um, things, even superstitions. My, my mother was telling me about lots of superstitions. Don't do this, don't do that, don't do that, because my parents, my great grandparents told me about this. So all that we are doing like a compilation, again, little by little, and we're forming or we're structuring more lessons. So that's when we decided to, how we decided to take advantage of um, social media, especially YouTube, because you got the camera and then you will start publishing your, your lessons. And that's how we um, became interested in this. And now what then the next um, stage, let's say the next stage is to actually um, structure some kind of a, uh, lessons but now we want to work it directly either with elementary school or kindergarten because those are the early stages where we think it's the most appropriate to instill in children the interest in their language and also to build that sense of identity as a Zapotec. We are a Zapotec culture, we are a Zapotec um, town or, or, or group so we need to work on that even though we are uh, dispersed in the state. We have Zapotec in the Isthmus, in the Sierra Juarez, in the valley, but we are one as, as a culture, so we need to instill that sense of identity also, which I think has been lost for different factors, either technology, the influence of uh, different lifestyles, or something else, right? But we want to work on that directly, and if not uh, having the uh, Zapotec as the official language of town, but restore its use, restore its use in local ceremonies. We have so many protocols or these courses that we use. If you are invited to a party, there is a special discourse that you say when you arrive to a place, okay, let's do it now in Zapotec. Let's restore it the way it was. If you go to a funeral, there is such a beautiful wording that you use when you go to a funeral to pay your respects. Okay, now let's do it in Zapotec again. So that's, that's mainly the, the goal that we have to, and we hope to, to succeed in that.